Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot, where I have just found an ingenious place for my microphone and it's on the zip. This is good. Okay, we are rocking Michael J. Fox, kind of a mashup between Michael J. Fox and Morka Mindy today. Woohoo! And it's kind of cold in here, so I have got the Sloth Hot Water Bottle. My best friend and Leia joins us. Is she that side? Is she this side? She's right there. Yeah, she kind of stuck her head up, but she's like, get on with the show. Right, Tuesday, the 8th of December, 2020. 1,144 random and interesting and fun facts that you need to know. Cockroaches were here 120 million years before the dinosaurs. Gosh, that is a long time, isn't it? The most popular animal for a pet is a freshwater fish. Next comes the cat, followed by, of course, the dog. 100 acres of pizza are cut every day in the US. That is amazing. OMG. Did I just say OMG? I'm sorry. Lightning strikes are not as rare as you might think. Approximately 100 strikes hit the earth per second. Huh? Each bolt can have up to a billion volts of electricity. So does that mean that we are continuously being struck by lightning all of the time? Wowzers. Carrots used to be purple. We end on an interesting fact. Carrots used to be purple. They still are sometimes. I've seen purple carrots in the more posh supermarkets. Okay, I'm just seeing if there's anything in the astrological diary that we need to know about. Nothing that I understand. <laughs> okay, we're using the mythic tarot today. Juliet Sharp. Sharman Burke and Liz Green and thank you to those of you that sent me recommendations for Juliet Sharman Burke's um, I think it's called I can't remember what it's called the beginner's tarot anyway um, I've bought it off eBay so we should have that in a few days I like the pictures I would though because I just think I like her stuff actually I know Liz Green um, as an astrologer is amazing I've got a couple of her astrology books and I absolutely rate them massively her and Bernard Fitzwalter. I know that old book I've got from the 80s of Bernard Fitzwalter. Bernard Fitzwalter, Sun Signs. I did a video a while ago, which you can probably find on the channel, about my five favourite astrology books. Bernard Fitzwalter, King of the 80s. Okay, I swear by that book for relationships. I think you can still get it on eBay. I don't even know if it's still in print. And we are, oof, <laughs> we are reading reversals. And I kind of wish we weren't. Okay. Wow. What is this energy at the moment? Oh, okay. I get it. Overall energy cards. The world in reverse. Oiroboros, the snake that eats itself. The end of the um, major arcana. Coupled with our old friend Magician in Reverse, which if I'm not mistaken came up yesterday and quite a few other times as well. I think we're still in that energy, but do you know what? Yeah, when you get um, the world in reverse with the Magician in Reverse, you're not talking small beer, as my mum would say. It's not um, a few days. It's a whole cycle kind of closing out. So this is something which is more of what we're talking when we're saying paradigm shift. Some of you have written in to say, what's a paradigm shift? So this is not like a dictionary definition. This is just my definition of a paradigm shift. It's when you have a collection of patterns which make a kind of, I'm probably gonna make this worse actually. It's a collection of patterns of behavior or experience which make a kind of a model of being and something fundamental like the plates of it shift and it becomes a different way of being, a different model of behavior, a different human experience, okay? So I would say, um, in a big way, the internet was an enormous paradigm shift. 
it never just happens out of the blue or overnight. It shifted our consciousness, it shifted the way we live, okay? So that's an example of it. When you get the magician and the world in reverse, that's a paradigm shift right there. I don't know how I know that, but it is. And it may be on the macro level. I feel like it is actually. I know there's a lot of very deep astro astrological events happening around the time of the um, solstice, the winter solstice when the sun moves into capricorn around the 21st have a look at pam gregory gregory scott the other you know people who do astrology have a look at it because the events are quite deep the magician and the world in reverse is definitely representative of who has dominion who has authority ideology your personal beliefs being called into question by you you know, you are no, the person you are most accountable to, the CEO of your life, of course, is you principally. The emperor, CEO, Zeus, king of the gods. You're the king, you're the queen of your life, okay? With the three of swords, triangulation. Interesting. Three of swords in reverse, sorry, three of swords in the upright, magician in the reverse. Again, this can be falsehood, it can be manipulation, it can be kind of fake news, that kind of stuff. And then over here, as if that wasn't the spiritual big jobs enough, Wheel of Fortune in reverse, Hierophant in reverse. Now we've talked about the Hierophant, <laughs> we talked about the Hierophant in the Morgan Greer with his big, uh, with his big bog cleaning gloves on, wasn't it? His marigolds, cleaning the bog on a Saturday morning, okay? The Hierophant, the High Priest, for me in these readings, and it keeps coming up so often, is representing order, is representing historical thought. It's a paradigm of thinking, and I feel like it's shifting, and I have no idea how, but it's quite seismic. And it could be the kind of thing that historians will look back on 200 years and say, ha, huh, 2020, you know, schools may do a whole... Um, piece of history which is just called 2020 it feels like that interesting isn't it interesting now alongside that we have the page of wands with the six of wands both in reverse this isn't a time which can be in which things can be easily won because i feel like it's definitely um I want to say jam tomorrow, but it's making me think about my advent calendar in which I have a new pot of jam every day. And every time I eat it, I think about you and I think it's jam today for me. <laughs> oh, I know it's completely wrong. But let's just say this is very much a jam tomorrow um, situation. It's playing. You're not even playing the long game. This is the long game. OK, it's just it has things like Saturnian, um, long-term, heavier, slow wheel moving energy for me. When you think about the Wheel of Fortune, think about wheels kind of grinding into motion. They take a bit of warming up and they take a bit of, of going, okay? I hope this is making sense. Right. And then finally here, Sun in Virgo, the Eight of Pentacles, the ultimate card of keep on keeping on for the moment. I feel like in the sort of 3D, I also feel like I'm wearing a balloon, in the 3D, in the normal world where we all live and, and breathe and walk and do whatever we do, we have a facade of knocking out the pentacles of keeping going. And this is good, you know, it keeps us sane, it keeps us regular, it's the Philip Larkin, where can we live but days. Alongside that, and I would say sort of running underneath it, if we've got the world in reverse, which would kind of be that way. I'm just looking at a crow um, on the roof opposite. We've got this sense of things kind of pulling back before they go forward and of plates shifting, paradigms shifting in a way that we don't know. And I'm not sure anybody does. And I'm not sure it's possible or necessary to um, know the full story of it or even the chapter that we're in just to know that it's happening, that our normal lives are running alongside it, but underneath it, there is something quite base level, base level difficult. 
I hope that makes sense. That's a kind of a summary. I've been enjoying trying to summarise. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fair enough. We get Yang energy. This is kicking around. This is Sagittarius season. This is a fire season. There is a Yangness about it, but it is a strange kind of Yang. This is a strange kind of Yang. It's not linear. Look at how this fireball goes up, okay? It doesn't go in a straight line. It's a bit, it's a bit seismic, okay? There's some seismic energy by the book. And whenever we get this, it reminds me to throw the book out of the window. The Eight of Pentacles is a by the book card. It keep, you keep going, but some of your rules are probably going to be broken, probably by you, okay? And that's the best, isn't it? Breaking your own rules is a shift. But remember to breathe, and I forget to do this, especially for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere where it's, live it, where it's um, a bit colder, she says. I mean, God, it's not even that cold here. Tell me what the temperature is where you are. It's going to be much worse. It's only minus one here. I know. And I'm already breaking out the 15 jumpers. She of the 15 jumpers. Anyway, leave me a comment. Let me know if that made sense. Let me know what you think of the summary. Tell me the temperature where you are, and I will see you tomorrow. Namaste.